Hi, Dr. Matthew Weiner from Commerce Michigan, here to talk to you about diabetes. I see a lot of diabetic patients in my practice. I practice weight loss surgery or bariatric surgery. We also provide counseling to patients in the office who aren't interested in surgery, and, and certainly we see a number of diabe diabetic patients. One thing that I struggle with is that the American Diabetes Association diet, or ADA diet, in my opinion, doesn't fully leverage the power of nutritional change in terms of addressing diabetes. So I'm here to help add some, some advice that I believe you can, you can do in order to not just control your diabetes better, but potentially, and in many circumstances in our practice, eliminate diabetes. So before we get started, it's important to recognize what our goal is in terms of adjusting our nutrition. And there's two ways you can think about this. The first way is you can think I want to help keep my blood sugar stable, typically high but stable, so you don't have the highs and the lows. That's, in my opinion, what the American Diabetes Association diet typically targets, although they have improved um, uh, over the last few years. For me, when I work with a diabetic patient, what I really look for is how can I make their diabetes improve? How can I improve the relationship between the insulin receptors on the cells and the insulin molecules that make it so that your body functions better and in fact you need less medication? And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today is how to, 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 to use less medication. Again, preventing the extremes in blood glucose, although it's helpful in keeping you out of the emergency room and keeping you from having to kind of run to get some um, uh, sugar or something to bring up a low blood glucose is not our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is to make your diabetes go away. So I'm gonna to talk to you about some things we can do for that. We really want to improve your body's response to insulin so that what diabetes is, is a dysregulation of the, the interaction between the insulin molecule that circulates through your bloodstream and the receptors that are on their cell. So before we really get a good understanding of it, let's talk about how insulin really works. What I've, what I've shown here is a diagram that demonstrates a cell right here, and this is a cell. And on the surface of the cell are these insulin receptors. So insulin will come close to the cell and it'll bind to this receptor. And when it binds to the receptor, Inside the cell, it triggers a certain action. And it actually differs whether it's a liver cell or a muscle cell. You may be taking in glucose or you may be excreting glucose. There's different things that happen as a result of, of insulin in different cells, and that's really not important. The important thing is that we want to make sure that this process functions as cleanly as possible. So what we see with type 2 diabetes is we do have some of the receptors that work well, but others, if, if you look closely at the diagram, they don't match as well. The insulin receptors don't respond as well to insulin. So what your body does is even though it's releasing all this insulin, the cells aren't seeing it, so the whole feedback mechanism isn't getting back to its target to keep the insulin levels the same. And what we see is a lot more insulin. You can see, looking back at the previous slide, there's just a few insulin molecules, but when you have diabetes, you have lots of insulin uh, molecules present. And so we see way too much insulin because the receptors aren't functioning well. So our goal is to turn these receptors that aren't working correctly and make them function more correctly like the one we circled over here on the left. So there's, in my opinion, three ways that you can achieve this. The first is by eating a healthier diet, and that's different than weight loss. You don't have to lose any weight at all in order to to, uh, to get some improvement in your receptor function. And what happens is when we eliminate the processed foods and the refined foods that cause rapid spikes in blood glucose and trigger large amounts of insulin to be released, we end up, um, we end up worsening our diabetes, resulting in more insulin being released and worse functioning of the receptors. But when we start eating the food that our body's designed to eat, like fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and beans, then the receptors start to function better because they're being provided better fuel and we have a, a lowering of your overall blood sugar. So even before you lose a pound, just by eating the right foods, eating the foods that nourish the body, will they'll improve the functioning of the insulin receptors and you'll end up lowering your blood sugar. And I think that's important. It's not just about losing weight. It's also about eating the right foods. Weight loss also absolutely does improve your receptor function. 
And there's really, in the, the way I look at this, two components to this. The actual act of losing weight, when you're burning more calories than you're consuming, and we can talk all day about what controls that, that's a, um, not as straightforward as most people talk about. And those of you who've read my book certainly understand that the body helps control that ratio between burned and, and uh, consumed calories. But if you're actually burning fat, dropping your weight, that will lower your blood sugar. Then also having less body fat will lower your blood sugar. And what we'll often see in patients is as they're dropping weight, we'll see really great sugar levels, improvement in their diabetes, and then they'll hit their weight loss plateau, which is very common. And when they hit their weight loss plateau and the weight loss stops, we see the sugar start to come up a little bit, even without changing the diet, even without regaining any weight. We see the sugars come up a little bit, and what we're seeing is that you had a great benefit from actually burning the fat but when that fat burn stops and you start to maintain a more stable weight, we end up with, with um, a little bit of a rebound of your diabetes. So it's not just losing the weight, it's the act of losing the weight that improves your blood sugar. And then finally, exercise, particularly the high intensity interval training or resistance training exercise. Cardio for diabetes is helpful, but not all that great. And most diabetics will tell you, if my blood sugar is high and I go for a walk, my blood sugar will come down, and it absolutely will. But if you really want to drive those blood sugar down, you got to build more skeletal muscle, more muscle, and that muscle will help to improve the receptor function and decrease your overall need for insulin and your overall sugar level over time. So what should diabetics eat? The number one food I think all diabetics should eat is our beans, and this is is to some degree a little bit controversial because beans have carbohydrates and all diabetics are taught to count carbs. But as many of you know, all carbs are not created equal. And there is a, a subset of carbs where beans are the perfect example that are what I call resistant starch. It's not my term, it's actually a fairly common term used in the nutritional literature. And what it means is that we have the starch, which is a straight, long string of sugar molecules. And your body will slowly break this down over time as it moves through the intestinal tract. Because of the, certain, the molecular bonds of this type of starch, we're not good at rapidly breaking them down. You take a piece of white bread or even a white potato, and your body will immediately break those bonds and quickly release all the sugar molecules into the intestine. And it doesn't take very long. It doesn't have to go all the way through the intestinal tract before you've absorbed it. In fact, you absorb it within the first few minutes and it often takes 90 minutes or even longer to make it just through your small intestine. So with beans, what we see is a very slow release of the sugar molecules, like an extended release molecule. And it's the slow release of sugar molecules that help to maintain a constant level of blood sugar and, in fact, help make the receptors respond better to the available insulin. So the beans don't just help you keep a stable blood glucose level, they also help the receptors function better so that you require less insulin and really improve the overall disease itself. So I think that's the first place to start is adding at least one serving of beans a day, ideally more bean soup, Mexican dishes that use even the vegetarian refried beans. The term refried beans, I think, is uh, sometimes discouraging to those patients trying to lose weight. It sounds like it's something you shouldn't eat, but there are actually really great formulations of refried beans that, that um, really don't have much or if any um, added fat. The next thing people should eat who are diabetic are greens. Lots and lots of green leafy vegetables. These are the single most nutritious foods on the planet, and we should consume as many of those as we can. I like my patients to, to consume what I call a set point smoothie because it lowers your weight set point. And that set point smoothie is predominantly green leafy vegetables like spinach or kale, but also has some fruit and often some spice in it. Um, and these green leafy vegetables help to really fuel the cell and improve the overall receptor function and bring down the blood glucose level. So anybody who's a diabetic should try to eat a large serving of, green vet, uh, of leafy greens at least a few times a day. 
Another highly, highly controversial discussion is whether or not diabetics should eat fruit. And I will acknowledge that for many patients, fruit will raise your blood sugar for a short period of time. But I challenge anyone who's a diabetic to try this experiment. Check your morning blood glucose and eat an apple, which actually, as far as fruit goes, has a decent amount of sugar. And then check your blood glucose level 30 minutes later, an hour later, and then two hours later, and compare those numbers. The next morning, I want you to eat a bagel. Check your blood glucose level again, 30 minutes, an hour, and two hours, and I personally guarantee you, you will see an overall higher average blood glucose after eating the bagel compared to the fruit. And so although fruit will raise it a little bit, it also contains lots and lots of phytonutrients, things that help the overall functioning of the cell and improve the, in, improve the, the diabetes and the insulin receptor um, relationship. Uh, the fruit also is packaged with fiber. And so even though there is a lot of sugar, it works like the bean and it causes it to be slowly released as it moves through the intestinal tract instead of rapidly broken down like after a bagel. So we look back at our nutrient dense or thermostat raising and thermostat lowering chart. And in fact, it also applies to blood glucose lowering and blood glucose raising. So obviously at the, at the end, the foods that are going to lower your blood glucose and improve your diabetes the most are vegetables. Fruit also, starchy vegetables are things we have to be a little bit careful about. I personally recommend the colorful starchy vegetables. Nuts and seeds are, are, are fine things for diabetics to eat. And as we get into the meat and dairy, even though meat does not have carbohydrate in it and is typically given a free pass for diabetics, we're seeing over and over higher consumption of meat results in a higher rate of diabetes over time. And so there probably is a significant benefit for diabetics to not necessarily become vegetarians or vegans, but to decrease the amount of meat that they eat over um, time. And then obviously the refined foods and the grains like the flours and the brown rice and oatmeal and things like that can raise your blood glucose substantially, don't really improve the receptor function and are things that, really, that we should avoid. If you have any more questions, you can pick up a copy of my Pound of Cure um, uh, book, which is an excellent weight loss program for diabetics as well. Um, or check us out on Facebook or our YouTube channel, which is rapidly growing, uh, uh, an increasing library of videos to help educate people, provide sound nutritional advice um, from a physician. Thank you.